Hello, my dear audience. Today we're gonna visit a house that looks like an average suburban home. And when you see it from the street, you can easily drive by without noticing it. However, this design has some very interesting features. So let's take a look inside. The Alexander House is a single story home placed on a flat piece of land and fully enclosed by neighboring houses. It consists of a main house with a diagonal wing attached to it at the left side. Let's now remove the roof and take a look at the floor plan. We color the separated spaces and name the function of the rooms. Finally, we decorate the drawing with furniture to give an indication of the size and dimensions. On this drawing, you can see that the roof on many places extends beyond the perimeter of the living space. This creates a cantilevering roof that provides shadow, like a porch. Yet at the same time, some parts of the roof are skeletonized, exposing the wooden roof beams, and through these skylights, the windows are sunlit and underlying flower beds are illuminated. A large part of the house has a flat roof, but it also has two gable roofs. One over the bedroom section in the left, and there's a gable roof that goes from left to right in the middle of the main house. This gable roof increases the height of the windows, which brings more sunlight deep inside the living room. Because there's no lowered ceiling, both flat roof and the diagonal roof beams are visible inside the living space. A large part of the facade is hidden behind a brick wall for privacy. When we go behind this brick wall, we see a large alcove that is created by retreating the facade under the roof. In this alcove is a large planter, and next to it is the front door. A very unique feature is a thin horizontal planter that leads to a narrow rectilinear window next to the front door. Behind this window, the planter continues through the hallway towards a large internal garden in the living room. This garden is sunlit through a glass skylight. This internal garden blurs the verge between inside and outside and it mixes the interior with the exterior. From the planter we turn to the right and we look at the sitting area. Here you can see how strong the influence by Frank Lloyd Wright is. With its brick walls, redwood interior and brown and ochre colors, the house is very similar to the Usonian style by Wright. The many roof beams create a strong perspective and enlarge the feeling of space. But this is not the only way to make the living room look larger. A second way can be found in the sitting area, which is sunken in the floor level. This creates a separated space without having any internal walls. A third element that enlarges the spatiality are the two windows that come together in the corner. This makes the corner difficult to see and takes away the feeling of enclosement. Removing the idea of living in a box and breaking open the living space. Here you see that the gable roof extends beyond the living space. This puts less pressure on the outer walls. By making triangular openings in the cantilevering, still enough sunlight can enter the windows. Because the bookcase doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling, sunlight comes in from the window behind. When you go around this bookcase, you see that it functions as an internal wall. Creating a corridor that leads to the bathroom, which is placed at the back side of the fireplace. Next to it is the first bedroom, which is the only bedroom that looks out over the garden in the front.
When you compare the older photos with the new ones, you will see that the house has changed a lot. The internal garden was replaced for a single plant and the walls of the kitchen were removed to create an open kitchen. Also the yellow color of the ceiling was painted white. Personally I prefer the old cozy feeling that the house once had. The new look feels too shiny and too modern for my taste. And it takes away the modest and organic interior that John Lauder had imagined. Next to the kitchen is a small room with a sliding door. This room was originally used as an office and had a built-in bookcase. But it is now used as a den to watch television. Left from the kitchen is the second front door. Here you see the garage, which is placed in front of the kitchen. The storage and laundry units are accessible through a back door in the garden and through a door in the den, which was a later addition. While the front side of the house is enclosed towards the street, the back side is opened with floor to ceiling windows towards the garden. This makes the garden a central part of the interior, with all living spaces oriented to it and isolating the house from the bustle of the street. The corridor that connects the bedrooms has from one side windows over the entire length and provides a complete view over the garden. There are two bedrooms at the left and one master bedroom at the end. One bedroom has a dressing table placed in an alcove. Each bedroom has its own bathroom. This bathroom is accessible from inside the bedroom. While this bathroom is only accessible from the corridor. In the master bedroom, again the windows are placed in the corner, to create a more spatial feeling. Through the sliding doors near the dining area, we step outside. The house has a large terrace that is placed under the cantilevering of the roof. The garden was for many decades full of plants and greenery. But more recently, a very large swimming pool was placed changing the atmosphere of the once humble Usonian house into a more luxurious pool house. The Alexander residence is by far not as iconic, spectacular or eye-catching as many other designs by John Lautner. But it proves that even a more standard design by Lautner still has a lot of interesting features to offer. And this is just what makes it worth to take a close look at each of his houses.